Hey everyone, uh, this is Patrick, the part-time IT tech support guy for Better Homes and Gardens. Um, Garrett had asked me to kind of make a video on just uh, password keepers and some basic kind of information on uh, you know, like a high-level overview, I guess, of, of you know what they are, what they do, uh, maybe some different options that you could look at. Um, so I got a few different things I'm going to go over here, uh, but just in general, uh, they you know it, there's a lot of different options to save your passwords, so that way you don't have to sit there and type it in every single time you pull up a website. Uh, sometimes applications or anything like that. Um, there's some different options, different programs that allow you to save your passwords, um, and then you can kind of sync them across a bunch of different devices. Um, you know, so it's it makes it a lot more convenient. It makes it a lot quicker, so you don't have to remember all those things. Um, and then some of this is built in, like into like a computer or into like your phone, anything like that already. But again, there's there's some kind of like third party uh, applications, like LastPass is going to be the most common one that, that people will probably see there. Um, so uh, I'm gonna I got another computer over here. I'm gonna switch over to this one. This is an Apple. So a lot of people, if you have like Macs or if you have an iPhone. You're probably already kind of familiar with this, um, but Apple has a, a built-in password keeper, and it's going to sync it across all of your different devices. So if you have, you know, an iPad, a MacBook, and an iPhone, then you can stay signed in, uh, you know, across the, you know, all the different devices. You can use your same login. It really makes it pretty easy and convenient. Um, that is like the Apple keychain here, and so on this screen on this Mac over here. Um, if you want to get that set up, if you haven't set it up before, if you go into the system preferences and then you go up to your Apple ID up here, um, all the, the different options that your Apple ID is going to be synced in. If you want to have this keychain one right here synced up for that, uh, that's going to be what allows you to, to sync all your passwords up. Uh, across any different device. So you wanna have that checked on, on you know, your phone as well too. Um, but if it's not checked, go ahead and check that there. Um, and then the other thing is, just found a quick article on it. If you don't have it set up on your phone, just go to your settings, tap on your name, and then choose the iCloud and then tap the keychain and then turn it on. So that, that way that's, that's up and going right there as well too. Um, but that's how you do it on an iPhone for the most part. Um, and then uh, once you have it going there, then if you go to go up to the go screen here and go down to the utilities. And then uh, if you go into this keychain access, I believe it'll probably ask for your password at some point here. There we go. Um, but you can see all of the different things that it's logged into and it's saved everything there. Um, and you can kind of sort it down by, you know, if you just want to look at, you know, what's saved to your cloud, uh, you know, different programs or anything like that that's saved there. And it also remembers like your Wi Fi as well, too. So, like, this is my home Wi Fi right here. But, um, you know, so it'll sync up a lot of different information across a lot of the different devices. And if you want to see it, um, you can go in here and it'll give you a little bit of information about it if you just double click on it. And if you click on show password, it's going to ask you for like the master password, you know, for your, your uh, iCloud account uh, or your, your laptop basically. But um, then you can go in there and you can actually see the password if you want to just give that to someone there um, or if you wanted to like delete some of those out or change it or anything like that. But um, it, it really is nice because, yeah, if you've got something on your phone and you sign into it, then if you've got it synced up with your computer, it just, you know, keeps all that information right there and it makes it easy so it's not too much of a pain. So um, it's nice. It's built in. It's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. it it's just a part of Apple products. Uh, it doesn't maybe have quite some of the same, you know, options that some of the programs do that I'll talk about here. Um, like some of the other ones, you can share a password to someone else. Um, it's maybe not as easy to sign up and sync across different devices. So if you have like an iPhone, but then you have a, a PC at home or, you know, you've got an Android tablet or something like that, uh, it's not as easy to, to kind of sync all that up there. But um, the other thing I'm going to kind of go into is I'll switch screens off that real quick. Um, and just also by default, 
Windows doesn't have a built-in device, you know, sharing option like that, like, uh, you know, the Apple does, it doesn't have anything. And also, I mean, if you have a Windows, it's not like you have a Windows phone that you can sync it into and uh, anything like that. But um, there are some different options, um, you know, kind of depending on, the, I guess, some of the devices you have too. Like if you have a Samsung phone, you know, some of those actually have like a Samsung kind of sign in where you can, you know, sign in and save all your logins. Uh, really the kind of benefit of that is, let's say you lose your phone and you go and you get a new one or you just buy a new one or something like that. Um, you can then sign in with the same Samsung ID and then, you know, back everything up uh, that you had there, you know, within the options that Samsung has. I know like LG has that as well too. A lot of the phone vendors have that that aren't iPhones. Um, but if you're using like a computer, like a Windows computer, um, there's, and even really any kind of computers, there's a handful of different softwares out there that you can buy. buy. Um, some of them have kind of like a free version of it that may be a little bit watered down, uh, but they also have uh, some different, you know, paid versions as well too. Um, this site right here is a really good site, uh, pcmag.com. If you're ever looking at like software, anything like that, antivirus, uh, different kind of, you know, things you can buy for technology at home, PCMag has a lot of great uh, articles that, that show some of the benefits of it here. So. This one right here has their reviews of, you know, a whole bunch of different softwares that will sync up, you know, across devices, um, you know, for keeping your passwords. LastPass is the most common. That's something that I've used before. I had a job that, you know, um, my boss set it up and then I set up a free account and then that way he could share his passwords to me and if something changed, you know, he could update me with it. Um, so there's some different options there. Um, but like, if you look at this article, Three ones that I've heard of before are Keeper, LastPass, obviously, and then Dashlane. Um, but there's a whole bunch more in here that you can sit down and kind of look through. There's a little box down here that if you once you click it down, it'll give you a brief rundown of just all the kind of generic, you know, uh, here's the, the quick bullet points of what's good about it, here's what's bad about it. Uh, so, like, again, LastPass is the one that I'm more familiar with, so I'm going to probably talk about that. I'm going to show that off here. Um, with these, a lot of them have it. So if you've got multiple different kinds of branding on devices, so if you've got, uh, you know, again, like a Windows PC, you got an iPhone, you've got a, an Android tablet, you can sign in across all the different devices and then, you know, share all the passwords so that way you don't have to sign into it. Um, a lot of them have a bunch of additional kind of features on there as well too. Um, like some of them you can create two-factor th two authentication. So that way, every time you sign in, you've got to give like a notification on your phone, like, yep, that's me, that's okay. Uh, so if you want that extra layer of security, that's something you could add in. Uh, some of them on like a paid version have a dark web monitoring tool. So basically what that kind of does is it, it keeps an eye out for like data breaches. Like if a company is, you know, hacked into and they, they get a lot of like stolen passwords or anything like that. So if your name kind of shows up, if your email address shows up in one of those lists, it will notify you, hey, it's probably a good idea to change it. Uh, some of the other things in here is... Um, you can create random gen generated passwords. So instead of typing in the same password, you know, you know, I know a lot of us have, you know, the same password that we use for 38 different websites and all that. Uh, you can just have it just generate and save, you know, this big string of gibberish. So that way it's gonna be way less likely that someone's gonna be able to get that and get into it there. Um, so if you're looking at adding something like that and syncing everything up across all your devices, uh, you know, LastPass is, is pretty much kind of the, the main stain of, you know, that's the, the big one there that's been around for a while there. Um, but I, I would say a, a good site like this is, to check out is, you know, just like PC Mag uh, or just any kind of review site. Um, but the other thing is when you get into that, and I, the one downside to programs like this, um, when you set it up, it's going to give you this big warning that says like your master password to this cannot be remembered. The reason they do that is so that way, if um, you know someone is trying to get into your account, they don't have a way to you know go ahead and send that uh, a reset password over to your email or to your phone number or something like that. So it makes it a lot harder for someone else to get into, which is really nice. But at the same time, it's really kind of annoying if you forget what that is. When I was getting ready to shoot this video, I had tried signing into my last pass, um, but I hadn't actually used the password in, I don't know, like four years. I've just been kind of collecting up all the, the passwords and uh, just been like, yeah, okay, save it. Yep, save it. Um, so when I went to go try to sign into my account, 
I couldn't remember what my master password was. Uh, and so there's a little reminder and it, it, you know, the little reminder I gave myself was a work password. Well, I don't remember what my work passwords were four years ago. So I, I basically ended up having to sign up, set up a new account here. Um, but whenever you get signed up for it, then it's going to kind of look like this where you can come in here and you can see, uh, you know, all the, uh, different passwords that you have saved. You can just launch it straight off the site. You can delete it. You can share it. You can kind of look at your settings and all that. Um, and a lot of the other stuff in here is it'll save like payment cards. So uh, that way you don't have to sit there and pull out your card and type in, you know, any information or anything like that. You can kind of save some of your bank account information, uh, addresses. There's a whole bunch of different things that will save in here. And a lot of these different softwares will do something similar to this as well. But um, yeah, so it just makes it really nice and convenient as long as you can remember that that one main password there. So uh, if you do go an option like this, make it something that you're not going to forget. Don't use it as like a, a temporary password that you've been using for the last two months and you know, make it something that you're going to remember for a while because in my case, I lost it. So there's some pros and cons to that. You know, it is secure, but the downside is I, I forgot it there. So that's, uh, you know, something that I'm just going to lose out on. Uh, another thing that uh, makes syncing some of your information across different devices really kind of simple and easy is... Um, if you use a browser like Chrome or Firefox, they actually have it where you can uh, basically create an account for just Chrome, or you can create an account just for you know Firefox, and then you can sign into that web browser across you know different devices and all that. Again, because that's not going to matter what operating system it is. It'll work on iPhone, it'll work on Android, it'll work on PC. Um, but then up here, you know, on Firefox there's a Firefox account and you can see like an account setting and then it's got some options to sync now. Um, so basically every time you tell it like, yeah, go ahead and remember that password, go ahead and remember my email address, you know, my home address, whatever that autofill stuff is, um, it's gonna kind of save that to your like Firefox account. And then if I go onto my phone and I hop on, I download Firefox and then I install and then sign into that same account, then I can sync that up. So, uh, it, it is really kind of nice how it will, um, and, and Chrome does the same thing. It's not just Firefox, um, but uh, it, it'll remember all that stuff. The other thing that's really nice about it is it'll sync up like all of your uh, your bookmark stuff here. So like anything for my kids schooling, anything like that. Uh, you know, if I go and I sign in on a new computer that I got last week, um, you know, basically I didn't have to sit there and go through and download or go to every site and then rebookmark it and then re-sign in and retype in the password and save every uh, everyone each time. Um, basically, I just signed into that Firefox account and it just downloaded all that instantly. It remembered all of you know the the links and like all my autofill stuff. Um, it doesn't quite have all the features that maybe you would see in like you know LastPass or Keeper or anything like that. Um, it doesn't. It's not going to remember you know, applications, like some of the programs will work for actual programs and not just websites on Windows. Um, you know, it doesn't have, you know, kind of the dark web monitoring stuff if you go and pay for that option. It is free, it is nice. Um, you know, just a little convenient to, to kind of save everything. Uh, the one big thing is like, if, if you're not really gonna do that, maybe it's like a password keeper, but if you are ever looking at getting a new computer or anything like that, or if you just want to save all of your bookmarks and all of your form data and autofill stuff, go ahead and, and just create an account and sign in and sync to it. That way, you know, whenever you have, you know, that new laptop or you get that new desktop or something like that, you can just pull that over instantly and it'll save you a lot of downtime. Um, or in some cases, if let's say you get like a virus or something like that and you have to reinstall, you know, your operating system on Windows, Again, you just sign back into that and instantly you just start pulling all that information. So I know with a lot of programs that, that you all use, they're web-based, uh, it makes it really convenient to kind of be able to swap from one computer to another without having to, to juggle all that back and forth. So um, the, there is kind of a master password that you can set on that. So, um, you know, when you go in, um, um, oops, I'm go on. But you can set it up so that way any kind of like how I showed on the, the Apple one, 
um, whenever you sign in and you want to make a change or you want to view a password, you can set uh, a master password. So that way you have to prompt and say, yep, okay, this is me. I know the master password and then it'll allow you access to everything else. Um, I have it turned off right now. Um, but uh, that's something that I, I probably, I probably should take my own advice and turn that on there. But, um, but yeah, that way it kind of keeps it so that way it, it's, you know, somebody just finds your laptop and it's open, but that way they don't just have instant access to it. So, um, but yeah, uh, I guess if you have any kind of questions on this stuff, um, you know, any questions about anything else, you can always give me a call, uh, 402-469-7977. Or you can email me at techsupport at betteromaha.com. I think. Thanks. Have a good day.